Hi everyone. So my name is Siobhan Ford and um, I started this YouTube channel because I basically wanted to spread the information about herbal remedies, natural remedies, and herbal medicine. A little bit of information about myself. Um, I'm studying clinical herbal medicine at Maryland University of Integrative Health and I am also working as a birth doula in the Nashville area. And um, before I get into the topic of what I want to talk about today, I just want to say that this video is strictly for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any illness or disease. Okay, so now that we got that out the way, um, the topic I want to talk today about is menstrual cramps and labor pain. So as women, um, you know, every month we go through the menstrual cycle, usually starts off with um, some sort of premenstrual symptoms. Um, they can be bloating, um, feeling tired or irritable, and um, usually some slight cramping, and then you'll head into the next phase, which is the actual menstrual cycle, and then you'll experience full-fledged menstrual cramping, and um, that is very, very, very painful, and I was one of those people who had really, really, really bad uh, menstrual cramps to the point where, you know, I would be crouched over in pain and I couldn't go anywhere or do anything. And um, usually, um, you know, I would go to the store and I would get some sort of over-the-counter pain pill, um, you know, Tylenol, Aleve, Motrin, Advil. Um, and so I have something right here, and this is just the Kroger brand of acetaminophen, which is basically an off-brand of Tylenol. Um, and I'm just going to list the inactive ingredients in this acetaminophen. So we have carnauba wax, cornstarch, crosscar mellow sodium, hypromellose, polyethylene glycol, povidone, pre-gelatinized starch, sodium starch glycolate, and steric acid. So you're probably like, what in the world is that? And I was <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, like, what is that? I don't even know what that is. I don't I can't pronounce half that stuff and I have no idea what it is and I have no idea what it's doing in my body. So um, you know, since I've been studying herbal medicine, I just want to become a little bit more informed about what I'm putting into my body and what it can potentially do in my body. So um there is a website um called environmentalworkinggroup.org and basically this um, company is dedicated to researching different products, household products, uh, chemicals, cosmetic products, things you put in your skin, um, dish detergents, laundry soaps, whatever the case may be, they basically will go through and list the ingredients on there and they'll tell you if it's a toxin or um, if it's a cancer causing agent or whatever the case may be. So. I looked up the inactive ingredients on this particular brand of acetaminophen and at least two of them were listed as environmental toxins and one of them was listed as um, an organ system toxin. So, And then also um, on the label of the actual bottle it says warnings, liver warning, this product contains acetaminophen, severe liver damage may occur. So. Um, some of you may not know, but when you use different over-the-counter drugs or any drug for that matter, when you put it into your body, your liver has to detox it. So it's very um, harmful and stressful for your liver when you take a lot of these um, drugs and chemicals. So, and then furthermore, I went on the CDC website, which is the Center for Disease Control, and they report that NSAIDs, which are over-the-counter pain pills, cause 7,000 deaths per year due to um, severe liver damage or severe liver toxicity. So I said to myself, okay, well, that's not, that doesn't sound very good. Um, what can I use that is a more natural form of, uh, you know, pain pill for, or some sort of pain medication for menstrual cramps. And let me just say, I'm not knocking anyone who uses over-the-counter pain pills or pharmaceutical drugs. This is just my personal research and, um, you know, you can do what you want. You can put whatever you want in your body. I'm not here to knock anyone or judge anybody about that. So 
I did my research and I came across something called cramp bark. And I don't know if you can see it, but this just says cramp bark. And this is an herb. Um, it's a shrub. It is native to Europe, Asia, and Africa. Um, it's been naturalized in North America, so it's not everywhere, but it may be in um, the particular region of the country that you're in. You just have to, to research it and see. Um, so basically, I got this from a store called the Turnip Truck, which is um, a health food grocery store here in Nashville. And it's, they have two locations. I went to the one on Woodland Street. And this bottle is about $11 at Turnip Truck. So it's pretty, it's, I mean, it's not super expensive, but, you know, it's $11. And this bottle will usually last me two to three months, just depending on how bad my cramps are and how much I take of it. So usually just... Um, Take a dropper full of it. Um, you want more, a little more than this. So you would take one to two dropper fulls of this, um, you know, up to three times a day. And when I tell you that this stuff has worked wonders, like this stuff is, I live by this stuff. Like I have not taken um, any Tylenol, Motrin, Aleve, or any sort of over-the-counter pain pill for menstrual cramps in about a year now. So this stuff is really, really good. And um, it's basically what the name says. It's, it's, it's cramp bark. It's for cramps. So a little more information about cramp bark. Um, so cramp bark, it, like I said, it's a shrub which is native to the woodlands and thickets of Asia, Europe, and it's been naturalized in North America. Um, the berries, it's um, it has berries and leaves on it. So the berries are used for... Um, you can make jelly with it or jam, or you can use it for dye or ink. They don't really use the berries for medicinal purposes. They usually just use the bark of the shrub for um, medicinal purposes. So it's traditionally used as a muscle relaxant and an antispasmodic. So basically an antispasmodic is something that um, prevents you from having, from having muscle spasms. So when the uterus contracts, it's basically a muscle spasm. So this herb kind of eases, I'm not, not going to say it totally prevents, but it eases the forcefulness of your um, contraction. So it's, it's uh, much less painful. Um, and it has a very rich um, history and traditional use, especially among Native Americans. Um, the Meskwaki tribe of Wisconsin used cramp bark to treat menstrual cramps, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and back pain. And the Iroquois people used it to treat prolapsed uterus, post-childbirth, um, and it was also used to prevent miscarriage and to ease contractions of the uterus. Um, a lot, the thing with herbal medicine is that um, they do have some case studies and like randomized control trials pertaining to herbs, but not as much per se compared to pharmaceutical drugs. And that just basically has to do with money. Um, there's no money in herbal medicine. I'm just going to say it and put it out there. There's no money to be made in herbs because, I mean, if you go and tell everyone, hey, instead of taking Motrin or Aleve or Advil, or whatever sort of over the counter, you know, pain pill you take, you can just go outside to the shrub, you know, across the street and get the bark off of it and, you know, make it into a medicine, that there's no money to be made in that. So they're not going to make any money off of that. So they're not going to tell you that, okay, yes, there are natural forms of um, pain medication. They're just going to tell you, take this, this pain pill, which is kind of ironic because um, according to the World Health Organization, 4 billion people which is roughly 80% of the world's population, uses herbal medicine as their primary form of medicine. And furthermore, um, according to this article that was published by the World Health Organization, 199 plant-derived pharmaceuticals are currently being used today in modern medicine um, in ways that correlate with traditional uses as plant medicines by Native cultures. So, because people are probably thinking like, oh, well, the Native Americans did that. Like, they were, you know these primitive people running around barefoot with a lion cloth, a loincloth on. But I mean, 
this article just show just says states that um many of today's modern pharmaceuticals are actually derived from plants so we can't just write them off as being some sort of primitive people okay so i was able to find a case study on cramp bark um and so i'm just going to read a little excerpt from the case study and the name of this case study is um hold on a second Okay, it's botanicals and their bioactive phytochemicals for women's health. And this was published last year, um, October 2016. Okay, so it says, okay. So this, this excerpt says cramp bark and black haw. Black haw is basically just another species of um, viburnum. Oh, so basically another species related to cramp bark. So it says cramp bark and black haw are often used as uterine relaxants and antispasmodics. Animal studies have suggested that both species have antispasmodic effects on the uterus and experiments with human uterine tissue also show a relaxing effect. Scopo excuse me, scopolatin could be responsible for the smooth muscle antispasmodic activity of viburnum. Um, and then it has a little bit more information about that. And I'll leave the link for this article in the um, in the box below, so you guys can kind of read it for yourself. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of information in here. There's some other herbs that they talk about that are. Um, that have been used to um, kind of combat menstrual cramps. Okay, so, and another thing about, another useful aspect of cramp bark is that it is also can be used for labor pain. So even though it is classified as a uterine relaxant, um, it does not interfere in labor, but it actually promotes uterine muscle tone and regulates the rhythm of contractions to facilitate a healthy labor. So basically, um, if you were planning on having, you know, using natural medicines or having a natural childbirth, you would basically take cramp bark at a, um, a pretty high dosage, like right as you enter into the second stage of labor. Um, and you would take it and it would kind of ease, you know, ease the baby on out and kind of, it's not going to lessen the contractions, but it's going to make it more effective. Um, and like I said before, this information is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure. So if, you, if you're if you planning on using cramp bark um, in your labor, you definitely want to talk to your midwife, your doula, or your, um, your doctor before you do any of that. So where can you find cramp bark? So I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I'll say it again. I got this at the Turnip Truck, which is um, a health food store in Nashville. And um, this bottle was $11. Um, you can also just order the bulk herb online. Um, I've had this bottle, this um, this bag for over a year. And this is four ounces of, of the herb, the bark. And um, you can either make it into a tincture. So you will use um, grain alcohol. You use grain alcohol, water, and the herb, and you would kind of mix it all together and let it steep for six to eight weeks. And I don't want to get into how you make a tincture because that's pretty um, a pretty in-depth situation. So if you guys want to me to show you how to make a tincture, I can do that. Just leave a comment below. Um, so you can either make a tincture or you can make a decoction, which is basically kind of like a tea. Um, so basically you would measure out how much herb you need and then you would put it into some distilled water and you would kind of simmer it for about 30 to 45 minutes and then you would extract it. I mean you would strain it into your cup and you would drink it three times a day. So that is cramp bark. It can be used for menstrual cramps, for labor pains. It can also be used to stop a threatened miscarriage because it does stop or kind of ease the contraction. So if you're, you know, think you're going to be having a miscarriage or if you actually are having a miscarriage, it can definitely be used to kind of mitigate that, kind of stop that. 
Um, I purchased. Oh, okay. So you can also purchase the herbs online. Um, I got this from a website called mountainroseherbs.com. And I really, really like Mountain Rose Herbs because, uh, for one, they're organic, they're non GMO, um, they ethically harvest their herbs, and they're a green company. And I believe this bag was $10.50. So, and, this, and like I said, it lasts maybe like two years. Especially if you make if you make the tincture make a tincture out of it, this can last many many years. So just ten dollars, and you have a a very very long supply of cramp medicine. Um, so you can order it from Mountain Rose Herbs, or you can uh, order it from any online herbal shop. It doesn't have to be Mountain Rose Herbs. I just like using that. So I always recommend people to use Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, and you definitely want to get herbs that are organic or non-GMO because if not, you're going to be extracting um, all types of toxins, pesticides, possibly antibiotics into um, your medicine. You don't you don't want that because that's, that's a whole other situation you have to deal with. And um, so if you guys have any questions um, pertaining to cramp bark or... Um, any type of herbs that you can use for menstrual cramps, just um, leave a comment below or you can um, follow my page on Facebook. It's called Ford's Herbal Doula Services. I'll leave a link below. And thank you guys for watching. And you can like, share, and subscribe. And you all have a very blessed day. Bye.